Some of my research studies tremendous change that took place in international trade over the last several decades. And that is the emergence of China as the world leading producer of manufactured goods. And that in turn meant that the countries in Europe or the United States were facing very rapid increases in import competition that led some uh, firms and some industries to decline sharply and then also had big impacts on workers. We can look at the way in which globalization or technological change shifts the distribution of incomes in the economy. We can study groups of the population who have fallen behind in our societies and also the emergence of uh, political extremism, all of which are topics that I study in my research. The challenge going forward is how can we, on the one hand, leverage uh, all the benefits that trade can provide, while at the same time avoiding some of the economic and social ills that trade has brought in the last decades. Trade is uh, at the same time incredibly simple and incredibly uh, complex, just like this uh, wonderful facility that, that we are witnessing. I mean, the World Trade Organization has two main functions. Uh, one is to prevent uh, trade wars and the other one is to um, promote further trade talks. And in principle, you know, those are, those are noble objectives. I think the problem is uh, that at the moment, the WTO really fails to deliver on uh, both these fronts, which is why uh, we are really in an existential uh, crisis here. What we need to explore is uh, really how important trade was for the growth of China, for example, and what it really meant in terms of lifting hundreds of uh, millions of people out of poverty and one that other developing countries could also try to imitate, try to emulate, to also uh, join the club and become uh, prosperous economies. So at the moment, my mission is to try to understand deep trade agreements, to really try to understand what modern trade agreements are about, because frankly, um, I think there's a huge gap in our knowledge. We don't know whether these modern trade agreements work or not. We don't know what works, and this is a debate I want to contribute to, and I think that's a really uh, important debate. Companies and firms and workers make products differently uh, today than they did 20 or 30 years ago. So we have these outdated ideas in our minds that a firm would make a product from start to finish, from inputs through all the component parts and the final good produced in one place. But the fact of the matter is, products are made in the world. And this raises new policy challenges and new policy opportunities. So there's always this temptation to address policy or to respond in firm decisions to things that have happened in the past. But governments need to be thinking about the future. I would like to see a conversation about new challenges to the global trading system. There are many, and these are serious problems. And as much as we might think and hope that governments will have all of the solutions, they won't. And individual firms, individual communities have to help come together to find new and creative solutions. So I want to talk about what firms can do, what individual governments can do, and what governments can do together through institutions like the WTO.